Hi, I'm Cynthia Rothrock, the Lady Dragon, and you're listening to Justin Harvey on the Justin Harvey Show. Hi, I'm Don the Dragon Wilson, also known as Jake Ray from Blood Fist, and you're listening to Justin Harvey. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Justin Harvey Show. We have a very, very special show today. I am proud to bring the debut of one of the greatest world champions of all time, Dawn the Dragon Wilson. Welcome to the show, Dawn. Hi, Justin. It's good to be here, and I appreciate you letting me speak to your viewers. And, and, and I appreciate you being on the show, Dawn, because honestly, Dawn, like like I was telling you on the phone the other day, I've wanted to do this for many, many years because after I had saw the film Blood Fist, I had to talk with you. Well, that was a long time ago, Justin, because I, we shot Blood Fist. I remember leaving L.A. in October of 88. Yeah, mm-hmm. October of 88, and it came out in 89. So, man, you waited a long time for to get me on your show. <laughs> Oh, a- absolutely, and from from the bottom of my heart, Don, I appreciate your time because I know you're a, a very busy man because when we were talking, you were telling me that you're involved in so many projects and um, and so many things, and you have your own movie co- company, correct? Yes, well, I'm starting, you know, I, I have started movie companies just not here for other people. And mm-hmm. I worked for their companies, but it, in other words, you know, the first film they made would have been one of my films, and they went on to become successful film production companies. But I, this is the first time I actually own part of the company myself, mm-hmm. and it's called New Arc Entertainment. And what gave me the confidence to do it on my own, to have my own company, was uh, one of the partners. There's three partners. One is a music producer, producer uh, Les Pierce. He's a Grammy Award winning producer in music. Mm-hmm. The other is a guy named Sid Sham, who is a, uh, I've met him as an actor, but actually he is a real estate investor from Texas, Dallas. Wow. And uh, he basically, I guess he's made enough money in real estate now. He's had one big apartment complex in downtown Dallas to sell, and he just recently sold it, and now he wants to, uh, I guess, you know, some people think that the movie business is just exciting and fun, and for him, he says, well, this is like his retirement. He's just going to help me run the company. So anyway, uh, this time it's, it's like a friendship thing. This is a good friend of mine, and and he introduced me to Les Pierce, the music producer, and, and he's become a friend. And so uh, the three of us are going to get together and uh, produce movies. <laughs> wow, that that that's amazing, Don. I mean, honestly, you you do so much. And um, I don't know if anybody's ever asked you this, but have you have you done any type of um, charity work for sick children or disabled children or? Um, like actually, I, you know what? I, I've done things for athletes and entertainers for children, and mm-hmm. uh, I believe they donate money to various different things uh, because it's a program where you know anybody who's a sports star of any it, it, or even actors, it, it's mm-hmm. called Athletes and Entertainers for Children, and then basically I, I've gone and supported their events. Uh, other than that, you know, if people approach me, um, I get involved in um, the, the various charities. I, of course, you know, I there's a a lot of charities that are not necessarily uh, as legitimate as they should be. Mm-hmm. So I do check them out before I put my name and, you know, support them. Um, mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I, um, I'm i willing to, you know, get involved in that. I, I think the most recent thing I got involved with is autism. Mm-hmm. I, I have two friends that have children that are autistic, and they kind of, showed me that, you know, some of the statistics and how serious the problem is. And so I said, oh, absolutely. I'll, sounds like, you know, they need to get attention to this. Uh, you know, they've got to get, uh, first, they've got to get attention to a cause. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, people don't even know, like like me. I was ignorant to the fact that autism is like an epidemic. Wow. You know, they, they don't know what the cause of it is, but mm-hmm. there's, there used to be like one in, in, in like uh, a thousand kids were born with any form of autism. Now mm-hmm. the number is way up there. Mm-hmm. You know, wow. So, uh, yeah, something. It well, that that leads them to believe there's something in the environment causing it. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, 
it is not a inherited genetic thing. It is something in the environment. Well, that, that we don't know what it is yet, so it's kind yeah. of scary, you know. I mean, maybe it could, it's going to even get worse. Oh yeah, I mean, that's the way it's looking, going, Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm, uh, you know, I, any time a celebrity can use mm-hmm. his quote, celebrity status to bring attention, and uh, retention leads to money. You know, once people realize that there's a problem and realize the scope of it, then they donate money. Well, that 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 is the best use of your celebrity, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, to, like mm-hmm. Sean Penn, when he goes to, um, you know, some disaster hurricane, mm-hmm. you know, to Trinidad or something, he mm-hmm. he brings, uh, or Haiti, yeah, it was Haiti, I think he, he went to, but, um, or Brad Pitt goes to New Orleans. Uh, when a famous person puts their name behind a cause of some kind, it helps get publicity. And publicity then in turn can generate money for the charity. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the goal anyway. That's the hope. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. No, I mean, no. And also, a lot of people may not realize this, but um, you were also in um, Batman Forever. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, yeah, and then that, we can that was, you know, it shows you, um, Justin, how Hollywood works. A lot, a lot, mm-hmm. a lot of people thought... Well, how did you go to do Batman? I mean, that's not the kind of role you would audition for. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm not positive, but I think Joel Schumacher just wrote that role for me because it was exactly what I asked him. He asked me what I could do on the movie. He wanted me to work three months on the movie uh, as Tommy Lee Jones's henchman. But I had contracts with other film companies, and I could not work for three months on Batman Forever. So he said, well, what can you do? And I told him I could come in and do one fight scene, and mm-hmm. then leave, and I said, if, and I would like to be disguised, I wouldn't really want my face to be seen getting beat up by Batman or Robin. <laughs> and he goes, okay. So a couple of weeks later, he calls up, and, and I go over to his office at Warner Brothers, and he shows me the scene, and I said, yeah, I can do this, Joel, no problem. And we shook mm-hmm. on it, and I came in, and I did the scene. And, um, you know, it only took a, a week to shoot, but, um, you know, they spent quite a bit on it. It was a, it was a pretty, you know, it, mm-hmm. it was a, a lot more there were 50 stunt people now when they edited it they edited it down so it only looked like eight but actually it was uh you know a much bigger scene originally and then it was just edited down to what what you saw in the film well, that that's amazing Don. and and also like with with blood fist i'm gonna go ahead and jump into this because blood fist to my knowledge is like it is not only one of the best movies but uh one of the longest franchise in history because there's like... Oh, yeah. Well, there's actually nine of them. Now, I start in eight. And the mm-hmm. ninth one, they when they sent me the script, um, I, you know, I don't want to say anything bad about Roger Corman. That guy is my godfather. I wouldn't even be in the film as it was for Roger Corman. But mm-hmm. he sent me a script I thought was not appropriate for me <laughs> uh, for, for various reasons. And, and so I, I uh, passed on Blood Fist 9, the ninth one. And uh-huh. a, an actor named Matt Mullins ended up doing it, and you know I've never seen it, but I've seen little clips of it. it looks like it was a fun movie, but um, mm-hmm. uh, I, I just remember at the time he sent me the script, I I did not like the script, and I that's why I did not do Blood This Nine, but I did do eight of them, and and you are correct, I don't believe there's ever in martial arts movies been eight mm-hmm. sequels for for one franchise. Uh, that's the uh, longest. Exactly, and you you almost did all of them, Don. I mean, because well, a lot of the of times <laughs> I did the first eight. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the times they usually don't get the same actor or martial artist to play to play the role. So. Um, yeah, you, what usually happens um, is the actors will do the role, but they they know that they are needed, and they demand more money than the producers want to pay. So mm-hmm. what ends up happening is they'll do a sequel and they'll use a different actor. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, the, the the one... Well, I think Keanu Reeves got $30 million to do um, Matrix 2 and 3 because they shot them both at the same time. Wow. And Because uh, he knew they needed him for those sequels, right? I mean, he was the star of The Matrix, the first one. And mm-hmm. uh, what ended up happening, though, is he took the $30 million they gave him as a salary and he gave it away. He gave it to the uh, special effects team. It was about 22 mm-hmm. people in the special effects team. They got the $30 million. And he kept his percentage of the movie, 
Mm-hmm. Because he also owned what they call a back end deal. He owned a piece of the movie, a percentage of it, and that ended up being more than thirty million. I don't know how much, but <laughs> it ended up being a lot of money. Well, um, yeah. Now, did so you have? Really gave away thirty. You know, and and how many people give away thirty million? You know, <laughs> that, 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 that's true. Now, did you have any idea that Blood Fist was going to be such a, you know, oh, such a no. success? No, I had no idea. Look, I came out here in 1985, and it was on the advice of Chuck Norris, who had been a friend of mine since, uh, mm-hmm. well, since the early 80s, since 1980. Uh, Chuck was going to my fights. He was announcing them. I mean, we were friends, and he was he was a big, you know, supporter of me, me as a mm-hmm. kickboxer. And he was doing movies at the time. And, you know, Chuck's the only movie star, TV star, that really was a fighter. Yeah, and Van Dam. I mean, you know, I mean, he did compete, but he was not a champion. We wouldn't know Van Dam's name or Jackie Chan's or Jet Li's or Seagal if they did not do movies. But mm-hmm. Chuck Norris was famous as a martial artist way before he ever did any dialogue in a movie. Yeah, because he was, you know, one of the best, if not the best, of his era. And mm-hmm. um, he made the transition to entertainment, and he suggested that I do it. So in '84, I retired from kickboxing. I fought Jean Yves Terrio in Montreal. Took that mm-hmm. money, came out to L.A. in 85 and started my acting career. Mm-hmm. And people said, well, yeah, but you had a lot of fights after 84. And I said, yeah, what happens is you come out here and you're not starred in movies and I ran out of money. Mm-hmm. So I went back to fighting. I ended up fighting an additional number of years until 1990. And then uh, by then I was doing movies and I had, you know, I was financially secure and there was nothing left for me to accomplish as a fighter. I was a basically a world champion, and all I would be doing is maintaining my title, correct? I mean, there's no title mm-hmm. after the world championship. Mm-hmm. There were no goals except, you know, keep the title another year. So I'd defend it, and then, you know, um, and then another year would come, and I'd have to defend it again. And I don't know, it, by 1990, it got to the point where I said, you know what, kickboxing has become an expensive hobby. Because mm-hmm. the time I spend training for a fight, I'm losing money not doing a movie. And um, what ended up happening, though, in 1998, I, o- I was offered so much money to come out of retirement. It, it was it was my highest purse, and I believe to this day the highest purse ever paid in a kickboxing match. Mm-hmm. I was paid that uh, up front by viewer's choice just to sign the contract. And um, so I came out of retirement. I had three more fights. But, you know, I mean, I mean I'm not at the age where you can have another secondary career. Yeah. You know, my last fight was 2002, and I believe I was 48 then. So wow. you can do the math. I'm 59 this year. This year I'll be 60. I'm still well, getting offered for fight. As a matter of fact, I right. signed to fight last year in Istanbul. Mm-hmm. Of course, it wow. was not going to be a the top caliber fighter. I was going to fight. You know, I told him I have to do like Foreman. If I'm going to come out of retirement, I can't fight the world champion. I've got to have some tune-up fights. Yeah. So I did take a tune-up fight. It was going to happen in September. But I think the promoters did not have the money to pay for me. And they mm-hmm. end up using a different main event. That's, but you know, shows you how crazy I am, Justin. I, I'm, I was 59 years old, and I was still signing for fights. Wow, you must be in great condition, Dawn. I mean, honestly, and I, I, I gotta make a comment too. Like, I agree with you on the on the Van Dam thing because, like, he is an actor, but he's never, you know, he's never been in any real fights. You know, I mean, uh, well, listen, he's not. He's never been in. Um, a professional kickboxing match, a world title kick, kickboxing match. I mean, we fight 12 rounds. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, he never had a, a single 12-round fight, I guarantee you. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, when he came out to Hollywood, of course, he lied and said he was a world champion kickboxer. But there is one thing about what he says that is true. Mm-hmm. He is undefeated. Because when you've never had a fight, you don't have any losses. If you, I, I, I challenge anybody to go on YouTube and find one 12-round fight with Jean-Claude Van Damme, wouldn't there be some? I mean, if he's a world champion and he's undefeated, he's defended his title and he became famous in the movie business, we'd all be able to go right online. You know, luckily, I love the Internet because people can see if I was real or not. Uh, oh, you'd, I, probably go on, you'd probably go online and watch some of the fights I lost, but the, nobody likes that. But still, you know, it, it does show some of my wins and it shows that I was a real fighter. I didn't lie about my background. I am a kickboxer and there are some, you know, I had uh, almost 100 pro fights total. Mm-hmm. And um, you can go online and see some of them. I, I, absolutely, Don. And, and also, Don, I forget who he was supposed to fight, but Van Dam was supposedly supposed to be in this MMA fight against this yeah, other guy. Fight a tie fighter. He was going to fight a tie fighter, but um, uh, 
that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That um, you know, it did not um, uh, yeah. materialize. I I just don't trust him. You know, I mean, what, he never fought when he was young. Mm -hmm. When you're, you know, it's a twenty-year-old sport, by the way, kickboxing. It's not meant for fifty-year-olds. It's a twenty-year-old sport, and um, he didn't do it then. Why? Well, I, I just, you know, it makes no sense that he would actually attempt the sport mm -hmm. at fifty. I mean, it just, uh, it's different for me. I'm like George Foreman. You know, George Foreman was a great fighter when he was young. When he came back, he still ended up winning the world title, right? I mean, he won it. Mm -hmm. I think he's forty-five years old. Mm -hmm. So it's different when you've been one of the best fighters in the world and you come back. But when you've never even had one pro fight like Van Damme, you've never mm -hmm. been in the top ten, you've never held a title of any kind, to, to come out of, well, look, well, first of all, this is something that, you know, champions consider, but anybody who mm -hmm. says they retired, the only person that actually retires from fighting is the champion. Everybody else mm -hmm. quits. Mm -hmm. You know the difference? It's semantics, but still. I, I, you retire the title. In other words, you, you held it. You've had the, the honor of being a champion. You retire the title. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't win the title, and you're just a guy who competed once or twice or you know, three or four, you didn't retire from the sport of kickboxing. You just quit. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a different mentality. You know, I, 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 Van Dam quit kickboxing if he even had a fight, and then he's going to come out of quitting, quote, retirement, to fight, it makes no sense, you know. Uh. Yeah, it, it makes no sense, Dawn. And you know, and I, you know, I've I've talked with people that know Mr. Van Dam, and they've said, you know, he has burned me in the past. I mean, anybody that he has been in contact with, he's he's burned, you know. And, and it's just, I guess, it's the Hollywood lifestyle. It's just eating the life. Oh, I would I wouldn't blame it on that. You know what? I I, I um. People are who they are. They, well, as a matter of fact, just you know, psychologists mm -hmm. <laughs> claim most of your traits have been formed by the time you're five or six years old, or something. In other mm -hmm. words, your care, basic character, is the direction you're going to go. It starts at an earlier age than we'd like to think. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to think that every day we have an opportunity to be a, a different person. Mm -hmm. That we can change. You don't you have to do it slowly. Like, let's yeah. say you're stealing things for a living. Well, you can mm -hmm. wake up one morning and say, you know what, I'm never going to steal again. That's, I'm done. I'm going to mm -hmm. start giving back. And, and on that day, from that second, you're a different person. Mm -hmm. Now, you were a guy the day before that woke up and said, man, I'm going to pick this guy's pocket. I'm going I'm, I'm to break into this guy's car or whatever. But you can, I, I like to think anyway, that we have the ability, that we are in control of our destinies, and we have the ability to, at any point of our lives change the direction mm -hmm. we're going oh. and uh, i believe that guys like van damme mm -hmm. he was well, the kind of guy he was the kind of person he was was set way before he ever got successful in hollywood i wouldn't want to say well it's just hollywood success i believe he if he was humble or nice or friendly with people in the beginning when he came out here it was only because he was trying to he thought that's the way to act to get what mm -hmm. i want Mm -hmm. But once he got what he wanted, which was a certain amount of financial success, a certain amount of fame, then he, then his true personality came out. Mm -hmm. And he started, you know, he hurt stunt people. He, he started using drugs and partying, got divorced from his wife and uh, running around in Hollywood. And, and people could say, oh, you see, Hollywood, you know, he was a great guy, but Hollywood corrupted him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't see it that way. I see it the way a psychologist would, that his core personality is already formed when he came out here, and all the Hollywood stuff just allowed him to do what he, you know, the success he got in Hollywood allowed him to be who he really is. Yeah. That's the difference. So mm -hmm. anyway, I, you know, it's my only op an opinion. I'm not, I'm not myself a trained psychiatrist, but in my opinion, Hollywood did not corrupt Jean-Claude Van Damme. He, he basically um, had many opportunities Many mornings he could have woke up and said, you know what, I'm going to call a press conference and tell the truth. I never did win a world championship in kickboxing. This is insulting and degrading to the sport, and uh, it's wrong to lie, and I, I'm just going to quit it right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop all this publicity and information and say, yeah, Don the Dragon Wilson's right. He is a world champion. He held the title for 10 years. He's a real fighter, and I'm, I'm embarrassing myself and mm -hmm. this, disrespecting the sport by making false claims. And I, I'll oh. stop it right now. Any reporter, don't mm -hmm. write that I'm a 
undefeated world middleweight champion. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I, absolutely. He could have done that. In other words, you know, despite mm-hmm. Hollywood, he could have done that, but he never did. No, and you, you, you never know. I mean, he, you know, if he was going to do that fight, um, that would have changed things maybe, but I don't think he's ever going to fight. No, you know what that would have done? That would have just shown he did a fight. That, that's yeah. one fight. That's not a career as a kickboxing champion. And and then if he said, see, I was a world champion. See, I, I really can fight. I, I don't, that does not make the lies that he told back in the 80s true. Mm-hmm. It just means he's an older guy who fought somebody in a kickboxing match. <laughs> so that that's all it means. It means exactly what what it you know. Well, well, honestly, what made him successful, Don, and I don't think you'll d- disagree with this point, is uh, blood sports. What made him a star? If it wasn't well, for listen, blood listen, sports, listen, that, that was an opportunity for you know that movie was offered to Chuck Norris. He turned it down. Uh, really? It was Canon Films. Yeah, Canon Films. Uh, yeah, I think Chuck wanted to go the way of action films. He didn't want to take his shirt off and just fight guys the whole movie like, like Van Damme did. But it was a great opportunity for Jean-Claude Van Damme. And the truth of it is, he was talented. Mm-hmm. He, he, he was a good-looking guy. He, could, he was flexible. He looked good on film. He was muscular. I mean, he was a bodybuilder. His wife, Gladys Portuguese, was at one time the number three bodybuilder in the world in the female division. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so Jean-Claude had a lot of things um, that all came together to make him successful. You know, there wasn't a martial arts superstar like him around, and he had Bloodsport, which was the first of a genre of films. I mean, my career wouldn't have taken off if it wasn't for Van Damme. As far as the the entertainment industry, I'm very, very positive about Van Damme's accomplishments. Mm -hmm. I only have a problem with him, only with his um, false claims about kickboxing and his personal life that casts a bad shadow on martial arts, because mm-hmm. martial arts is supposed to get people out of drugs and out of bad things, correct? Yeah, and exactly. Good, honorable characteristics as a human being. Well, mm-hmm. when he got successful and famous, well, then all his cocaine use came out, and you know, his, his, his then he starts lying about his background, and I, I don't know, he, he became a negative representative of the martial arts. Mm-hmm. You know, and so so that is kind of a beef for me. But but that you know that is much further down the totem pole than the fact that as a former world champion myself, mm-hmm. there's a guy in Hollywood who's never had a pro fight who's running around saying he's a world champion. I, I don't like that. An Olympic swimmer, gold medal mm-hmm. swimmer, would not like it if a guy said he won a gold medal and the mm-hmm. guy ne- doesn't know how to swim. I, I actually, um, I, I do have some um, plan. Plans to get uh, Bill Wallace on my show. I he's a great guy. To... He's a great guy and an icon in the business. And yeah, you know, I, you know, I've got I've got his contact information. I'm sure I could um, get your 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 stuff and give it to him, and he can call you and do what, what I did. I mean, yeah, it's great. Always great to mm-hmm. to speak to the audience, to, to the martial artists out there. Oh, I, absolutely, Dom. Because my my audience on YouTube is growing by the day. I've got about a hundred and some subscribers now to oh, my great. channel. So, Great. and uh, I have uh, I have plans to have um, uh, Cynthia on my show as well. Um, yep, yep, she's 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 going to be a great one because you know she she's accomplished a lot. Uh, she was um, is the only mm-hmm. champion, female or male champion in kata and forms for five straight years. Wow! Um, you know, competing against all the major competitors and in in all the big venues you know all the big shows it's not like she you know uh didn't go to the big competitions i mean she they were the biggest and she was the number mm-hmm. one competitor for five straight years that, that's her you know athletic accomplishments then of course she went to hong kong and did a bunch of uh, hong kong movies starred in them and mm-hmm. at one time she was the number two box office star in southeast asia right behind jackie chan Wow, that's, well, she was, that's amazing. You know, she was kind of like a, a super. Well, she was. She wasn't like a super. She was a superstar in, in Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. Wow, that, that's amazing. And, and, and Dawn, I know I'm jumping all over the place, but I, I did have a question to, about. Um, I did have a question about uh, Blood Fist. Um, uh, how was y'all able to get the same actor that was the bad guy in the first one to play in the second one as the bad guy? Well, he he actually lives in the Philippines. Really? And, um, yeah, um, Joe Mari, I think is his name, 
I, I can't be sure he's passed away, but I think you can look it up on the credits what his name is. But uh yeah, he, he did both the blood fists and um you know, he did a great job. I mean he's 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 a you know, very talented actor, or was a very talented actor and uh a real nice guy. Real nice guy, very supportive of me and you know, 'cause he was very experienced and I was inexperienced in my first few mm-hmm. films. And uh he you know, he mm-hmm. uh was very um supportive and helpful for me. I and also, Don, I want to get this in there too. You do you do seminars and teaching, correct? And and self defense and oh yeah, yeah. And all I, that. Uh, I still do martial arts when I can't when when I'm um, you know available. I travel and I I do exhibitions. I'll, I'll spar people in exhibitions and I'll do um, seminars and make appearances at fights and. You know, I, I still got a little bit of connection. I and that was a, I, Chuck Norris advised me to do that early in my career. I mean, he said, you know, always make time. Don't just become a Hollywood person and just you know have meetings with directors and producers and writers. Uh, still keep a certain amount of um, uh, support for mm-hmm. martial art events, which I do. You know, that like I said, that the, any fame you get, you can help a charity to get attention, but also when you show up at martial art events, it helps the su- event to be successful. Mm-hmm. So that that's also a good thing. Mhm. Oh, well, absolutely. And um, I also heard that uh, you did um, some announcing for the UFC when I first started. Yeah, the original one. I, I was uh, one of the original announcers after the third UFC. I, I announced several of them, but I really didn't come on board to be an announcer. They they actually offered me. A, well, they didn't offer. They agreed to set mm-hmm. up and promote the fight between me and Hoist Gracie, and that's what was supposed to happen. And um, they said, well, announce some of our shows, get known to the audience, and then we'll set the fight up. So I announced a few of those shows, and uh, finally I said, you know what, uh, when are you going to announce the fight? And they said, well, truth is, Don, we really don't want to give percentages, because I was going to fight Hoist for 20% of the gross, whatever that would have been. At the time, they were getting about $4 million a show, so just if there wasn't one more viewer, I would have made about eight hundred grand. Mm-hmm. So that's not a bad fu- payday. Yeah. And I'm, a, I'm a mercenary, I'm a fighter, so, you know... The scary thing about fighting is this, brain damage. Not mm-hmm. physical damage, not little cuts on your face and broken bones. Or what I, I mean, everybody gets that. That's part of the business. Brain damage is, it doesn't reheal, and it could you know ruin your life, basically. But if I fight Hoist Gracie, like if I fight him tonight, he's not going to give me brain damage. He's not going to punch or kick me in the head. He's going to grab me, go to the ground, and submit me. Mm-hmm. Now, there's no fear in that for any, there should be no fear for anybody. You can't fight a safer fighter than Hoist Gracie. Mm-hmm. Think, think about it. Back in the old UFC, there's a lot of big, strong guys. They got boxers. They got judo guys. They got all kinds of guys that could actually do some damage to you physically by elbowing you in the face or you know headbutting you because it was legal back then. I mean, there's mm-hmm. a lot of things that you could sustain some some damage. But Hoist Gracie just shoots, grabs guys, gets them in arm bars, leg locks, you know, choke holds, and taps them out. And so I thought, man, I'm going to make at least eight hundred grand. And I'm going to have no brain damage. Of course, I'll do that any any Friday night you want. I'll set up that fight. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, so it was a no-brainer for me. But what ended up happening is they, they, they had what they felt was a successful formula they didn't want to ruin. What they had was eight guys fighting for a purse of 50000 mm-hmm. Now, that's a lot better financial deal for them than to have me and Hoist, and I'm going to make 800000 <laughs> wow. And if Hoist heard that I was getting 20%, you think he'd want to fight me for less? Mm-hmm. He'd probably want twenty percent. And if you give me twenty and hoist twenty, that leaves sixty for them. Wow! But you know, in boxing, what they used to do, they they give it. Um, you get thirty three and a third percent, like Hoyt or, or uh, say Holofield and Tyson fight. Mm-hmm. Don King promotes it. Well, Holofield gets thirty three million. Don King gets thirty three million, and the whole and um, Tyson gets, or excuse me, thirty million, because mm-hmm. they sell two million buys at forty bucks. 45 bucks, that's $90 million, right? Mm-hmm. And they split it three ways. That's how boxing works. Now, the UFC with Dana White and all these guys, you got like you know, 10 fighters, 20 fighters fighting, but they're making like 100 grand, 150 grand, 200 grand. They're not making the millions. They're not getting... The, the shows are grossing probably today around $40 million, mm-hmm. and it's all going to the UFC. <laughs> the fighters make a few hundred grand, that's it. They don't make 20, 30, 40 million. Mm-hmm. I, I know. I know. When they first came out with the UFC, there was 
hardly any rules or anything like that. And yeah, it was not a sport. You know, it was considered what they, you would call a spectacle. Mm-hmm. You know, so we're going to get a bunch of guys, and they're going to fight each other. <laughs> and we're going to stop it if one of them is unconscious. Mm-hmm. That's about it. You know, if you knock mm-hmm. a guy out, then the fight's over. They don't let the guy jump on your head after that. I mean, the referee would jump in and save you. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, you're right. It was a pretty unregulated. I mean, the athletic commission did not sanction it, you know. Yeah. It was, it was mm-hmm. an unsanctioned thing. Mm-hmm. Um, no athletic commission would, um, um, you know, okay it or whatever, supervise it. They didn't have athletic commission doctors there or uh, referees or and nothing. Mm-hmm. They, they just, you know, it was... Um, no, oh, it was something that they. Some people tried to down or um, outlaw it. As a matter of fact, you know, well, I, I was in yeah. Puerto Rico and they tried to the the Supreme Court there tried to outlaw it. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, the truth is, it, it's really safer. It's the safest way to fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Because, well, because you can quit at any time and nobody moves at you. I mean, that's an that's acceptable way to end the fight. Imagine two boxers fighting and one of them just says, you know what, I quit. Now, you hit me hard and I don't feel like fighting anymore. I, I, I'm going to come back next time. You can't yeah, do that in boxing. You can't tap tap out. That's what they call it, tap out. In my sport, we call that quitting. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when a guy hits you and you're slightly stunned, you go to the ground and, and you hold your hands up and everything in front of your face and the referee dives in there. Mm-hmm. That's called quitting. In boxing, baby, you're supposed to fight until you're unconscious. Then that's what fighters do. Oh, absolutely. And if absolutely. they get stunned, they, they give them many times, many fights, they give them what they call the standing eight. Mm-hmm. You stand up. Now, you've been knocked down. The guy decked you. You stand up, and if you can fight, the referee thinks you can defend yourself after eight seconds, you start fighting again. Mm-hmm. Now, they don't do that in the UFC, right? As soon as the guy goes down, if he's stunned... The guy, John McCarthy, dives in there and stops the fight. So it's much safer. I, I like the sport because it is safe and it's less brain damage. You can't you can't punch a guy in the head for twelve rounds. They don't fight twelve rounds. You know they fight you know three five minute rounds or five 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 minute rounds something like that. But mm-hmm. um, they don't uh, sustain the brain damage that boxers do, and they don't get uh, the kind of knee damage that kickboxers do. And I don't know. I, I like the sport. I, I like MMA. I, I, I do too, and I'm I'm sitting here, Dawn, racking my brain and thinking back to our, you know, our conversation. There, and I forget exactly what it was, and I I do apologize, but you did say that you did want to debut something on my show, so I wanted to give you the opportunity oh, oh, to yeah, do well, so now. You know, I, I um, um, have a lot of things that um. Uh, you know, I've got going on now. You know, we've got the T-shirt business, uh, 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 Dragon Traditions. It's uh, uh, traditions dot traditions with a Z dot US. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not debuting, but I mean, it's you know, it, it's been around for a couple of years now, and it's uh, you can go to traditions with a Z dot US, and uh, there's a lot of good high quality martial art T-shirts. Uh, then uh, I've got um, a um, uh, I guess you call it nutritional product. I don't want to call it. Yeah, it's a nutritional product that, uh, that I support with Genesis Pure. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, you can go right to the Traditions website and you can uh, check out the products of Traditions Pure uh, as well. Uh, your Genesis Pure. It's um, mm-hmm. you know a um, uh, hydration drink, kind of like Greater Gatorade is. Some mm-hmm. like that, except better. You know, uh, the scientists said that this is an improvement. And then the other one, is um uh I got, I got of course we talked about my new company um and we have a new film Cynthia and I are going to be doing it's a PG13 it's called uh, the martial art kid and uh what we were calling it is it's like Mr. and Mrs. Smith you know the Brad Pitt movie Angelina Jolie it's Mr. and Mrs. Smith meets the karate kid mm-hmm. so it's going to have a kid in it but uh Cynthia and I are going to be a married couple uh, who are going to try to influence the guy in a positive way through the martial arts you know, yeah. that's going to be fantastic, Dawn. Fantastic. Well, um, I, you know, we're we're gearing it for that specific reason. We want it to go right to the martial art audience. Oh, absolutely, because it's actually been a good while since we've had 
a good martial arts film in oh, today's general generation. With uh, Will Smith's son, that mm-hmm. one grossed two hundred million domestic. I mean, that was a pretty big hit. Mm-hmm. You know, but that was probably the last one. You're right. I mean, that's you know, the Karate Kid was the last one for the for the audience, like a PG thirteen. You know, we used to have Mortal Kombat. We used to have the uh, Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. It was more more martial arts slash family fare. But, yeah, recently it's uh, been, you know, the only martial arts you would see is in a hardcore action film. Mm-hmm. And, Don, and I've got to ask you this, because it seems like this is all that Hollywood is doing nowadays. What do you yeah. think of remakes of movies? Because they've, they've taken well, a lot of titles and remade them, and I... I fear one day that they're going to remake Blood Fist and it's not going to live up to its potential. Well, I believe if there is a remake of it, it was the one that Matt Mullins did. Because the, my complaint about that script, the main one, mm-hmm. was I felt I had already done the movie. I felt the script was too similar to the Blood Fist that I did the very first Blood Fist. And mm-hmm. I've never seen... It's called Blood Fist 2050, I believe. And it, it's the last Blood Fist Matt Mullen started. And, it, and it's, when I read the script, it seemed like the exact same thing I did. It was like a, a guy's brother gets killed, and he gets he goes to get revenge, and the, it ends up being that his trainer is the guy that killed him. That's the specific... Now, now that would be considered, most people, a remake, wouldn't it? Yeah. It, I mean, that's a remake and uh, of Blood Fist, the original. But it says 2050 because it's in the future. Mm-hmm. That was the big difference. But... Um, but you know, still the I, same script. <laughs> well, the, the basic concept is the same, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Brothers killed, and he's um, going to Manila to get revenge. I mean, gosh, this is too similar to me. That, that's what that that's the reason I passed. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, my feeling is all these. Um, I have no no problem with all these remakes. I mean, for one, number one, the reason Hollywood does something is because it makes money. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, they, if they're not making money, so obviously the audience enjoys it. And, you know, my movies are not um, uh, art house films that are meant to enlighten or change anyone's life, right? I mean, they're not mm-hmm. what you would call an important film that, in that regard. They're entertainment. Mm-hmm. It's it's a 90 minute roller coaster ride. Now, when you get on a roller coaster, Justin, you get on it. And you mm-hmm. go on up and down, around in circles, go around. You get all these thrills. You get excited, but when you when it stops, doesn't it bring you back to the same? Pl- you haven't gone anywhere. Mm-hmm. Is what I'm saying. A roller coaster ride excites you, entertains you, but you end up back in the same place you did when you started. Well, well to I, me anyway, mm-hmm. action fans pretty much do the same thing. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't believe you could say there's too many action films, whether it's Die Hard or. You know, mm-hmm. Mission Impossible, whatever, where at the end of it, you've had some life-revealing, changing experience mm-hmm. through that film. Mm-hmm. Usually you just had a fun time. You were entertained. Mm-hmm. And, and there's there's a movie, Dawn, and I, I do apologize that I can't remember the title right offhand, but there was a movie I saw a long time ago that you were in that I absolutely loved. You got stuck in like a, you got stuck in like a video game or something. Like a virtual... Oh, virtual combat. It was virtual combat. Yes. But yes. it was also called, overseas, it was called Grid Runners. But in America, it was virtual combat, and that was an HBO world premiere. Mm-hmm. So that one was very successful. And that movie, by the way, it was the idea... Um, you know, I was one of the producers, so it was our idea to have a guy who plays these video... Or he uses these video games to train himself, and then the characters come out of the video game. Now, after we made that movie, there was a movie mm-hmm. with... with um, uh, Russell Crowe called Virtuosity. Mm-hmm. It's the same movie. It's like they took the same idea. Now, could have been a coincidence, but our movie came out first, and then they did a big budget ripoff of that movie. Then mm-hmm. I also did a movie called Black Belt, which was about a guy protecting a singer, and then they fall in love, and, and then The Bodyguard came out after that. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't want to say that there are some Hollywood producers slash actors who watch my B movies and then kind of do a big budget of them. But it did happen twice. I mean, twice I made these kind of low-budget, quirky movies, and then the the general theme of them became big budget. It might just be a coincidence, but... Yeah, you know. yeah exactly. I mean, Don, you've done a lot in your career. My next question for you, and you can take as much time as you need for this one. Um, what is your expectations for 2014? I mean... 
because obviously, my friend, you have done a lot in your career. I mean, movies, the fighting, you know, a champion. What's your what's your what's your expectations for 2014? I have two projects that I've I'm committed to doing. They're both in pre-development, uh, which means they're not nothing's rock solid with them, and the, even the scripts are being written as we speak. Uh, one is called The Martial Art Kid, the PG-13 I was talking about. My brother is per- co-producing it with a uh, a woman named Cheryl Duncan Wheeler, mm-hmm. and um, uh, they're producing it. And um, I've, Michael Baumgarten is the uh, director, writer, and uh, producer, and he's real talented. His last film had three Oscar-winning actors in it, so it shows you the, the level of his writing. And he's going to write this movie and produce it. Uh, so that's one I, I'm, I'm going to do this year. I'm committed to it. It's going to be shot in Florida. And, uh, I'm uh, very enthusiastic about it. The other thing I'm doing is a movie called Blood Raid. Mm-hmm. And it is a just, you know, it is the most ambitious kind of action movie I've been involved in. It's, of course, I don't want to use the term ripoff, but like The Expendables, it's going to have all the B-movie guys in it. You know, The Expendables has Bruce Willis, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've got, uh, you know, Mel Gibson. I mean, they got all these A-list uh, action stars. Mm-hmm. Well, ours is going to have all the B-movie action stars, and it's called Blood Raid. And um, there is a surprise twist in the story. Uh, it starts off like a typical action movie, a SWAT unit's going in to stop these bank robbers, and so there's good guys and bad guys, and it's all in one location like Die Hard. It's this mm-hmm. big building they're robbing, and... Um, the bad guys land a helicopter on the roof trying to fool the good guys that, you know, they're going to take the helicopter. And, but what they do is they go down into the cellar and they're going to escape under the building in a, in a, like a subway system type thing. Mm-hmm. And what happens is they go down there and there's a den of vampires down there. And the bad guys and the SWAT unit have to join forces to survive. Wow. And that's the basic pl- Yeah. There, there's a whole complete twist. It's going to start just like a normal action movie. And that idea basically came from originally, like Tarantino did a movie called, uh, and Robert Rodriguez called Dust to Dawn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like bank robbers in that movie. Yeah. But it's about these, all these bad guys. They stop at this Mexican. If, you, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. They, they start, it doesn't start like, there's not vampires floating around or doing anything in the beginning of the movie. It just looks like a kind of an action drama about these bank robbers trying to escape, and then they go into this little Mexican bar, and, you know, I think when it turns midnight or something, the vampires come out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then everybody, the bikers, the drug dealers, the bank robbers, everybody joins forces to try to... One guy's a preacher, if I recall, right? Harvey Keitel's a preacher. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, good guys and bad guys, everybody joins forces to survive this vampire assault. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. uh, so, so yeah, the very end of Dust to Dawn is nonstop action, and the very third act of uh, Blood Raid is all action. Vampire action, um, cop action, and, and bad guy action. You, you know, Dawn, Those are the two projects I have this year. I, I would love to see you work work in a movie with Chuck Norris. I mean, since you... Well, you, you know, know you I, I'd love to have Chuck, and you know, you know what? Maybe we could... Look, what I say we should do, we, we need to do, if we want to get Chuck, mm-hmm. is, because at one time he said he would work with me, and no problem, but you know, he's semi-retired. I mean, he was in The Expendables, but Chuck doesn't need any more money. He, he produced Walker, Texas Ranger and started it for eight years. Great he's theory, retired from way. business. He's not out hustling to make movies, believe me. Uh, mm-hmm. But if I, what, if I make a good movie for martial arts with a good sto- story, good theme, and I show it to him, and I said, Chuck, would you play a character... We want to just add a scene. I'll make sure we can include him. And that's the way he could, mm-hmm. you know, maybe he'd be a judge in the competition or he'd, you know, he could do some kind of what they call a cameo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I'd love to do that with Chuck. Are you kidding? I mean, he's the guy who gave me the idea to even be an actor. Because <laughs> I, 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 like, I know he's not going to get up every morning, yeah. work his butt off, you know, put on the makeup and do all, memorize all your dialogue, do, do the stuff we actors do, the work part of it. I know he's not going to do mm-hmm. it now. Uh, especially for no money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, Chuck has done a lot in his career, and I think what he's trying to do is just slow down and take it easy. Yeah, he just wants to relax. You know, the guy's in his 70s. I mean, you know, isn't it time to 
But he did a great job at Expendables, didn't he? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, because I, I actually went and saw that on my birthday. And, uh, Don, I wanted to mention quickly, too, uh, I was looking on... I was looking on your Facebook page. Me and you almost have the same birthday. You were September 10th, and I'm the 11th. Oh, wow. So, how about that? So, how about that? Yeah, I was looking at that the other day, and I was like, how cool is that? <laughs> so, so. Coincidence. My life's full of coincidences. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, Dawn. I mean, because honestly, I worked on trying to get you books for two years on the show, so. Oh, wow. Well, I'm sorry I'm so hard to get hold of. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not your fault. I mean, you know, because when I, when I first started this, you know, Lon, um, uh, there was people, people saying because I have a disability, I would never have my own radio show. And anytime somebody has ever said to me, Don, oh, you can't go out and do this because you have a disability. What do I do? I go out and prove them wrong. So uh, that's a good attitude because you know what? Um, I, I think people were only well, we're mainly limited by ourselves. What we, you know, uh, what do they say? Can't never did anything. <laughs> oh, I, abs- absolutely. I mean, because I've got a spirit that will never die, my friend. I mean, that's the only way I can explain it. So well, that, that's um, a good attitude. That's a good positive attitude. And, um, you know, uh, I everything. You know, we live in, even Einstein finally had to agree, we live in a viewer-created mm-hmm. universe. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I say even Einstein, I said subatomic particles operate a certain way. But if nobody is watching them, nobody is observing, no scientist, they do a they. They do not react the same as if that scientist just looks at them. Mm-hmm. If a scientist observes, and this, this so Einstein said, "No, this can't be. The universe can't work that way." But it does. We, we actually humans have an effect. All life probably has an effect on other life and other uh, all matter, energy. We, we affect mm-hmm. each other. Mm-hmm. And um, if you start believing something, you will make it true. It will be true. If you believe something, it will be true, whether it's negative or positive. Oh, oh abso- absolutely, because honestly, Don, you know, I didn't care how long it was going to take. I was determined to have you on the show, and I've got I've got many fans that said, you know, you should try to book Don the Dragon Wilson, and I said, you know, but I've been trying, but I'm going to keep trying until I succeed. So I've got many fans that's going to be really happy when this is released. Oh well, I'm happy that it's going to be released. Then, if I, if I <laughs> if people will think I, I was hard hard to, to nail down. Well, you know, I do a lot of traveling. That is true. And um, you know, I used to have two assistants. Now I do things mostly myself because I, I you need assistance when you're doing. And I did do five movies in thirteen months. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could not keep track of anything. I couldn't even listen. My business phone. It might get. 50 calls in a day. Well, who's going to return all those calls? They're from all over the world and all kinds of people and all kinds of offers and business. I mean, I had to have other people helping me to filter through. And then, of course, if something's personal, it goes directly to me. If, mm-hmm. it, if it's my wife or it's my mom, my brother, or my you know, uh, personal friend. Well, But I'm saying when somebody just cold calls me from Germany or Russia or somewhere, mm-hmm. you know, it, it had it was getting filtered through agents and personal managers and assistants. And, um, you know, it just, it, if, if you were trying to contact me any time during that period of my life, it would not have been an easy thing. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you and I, if we, we don't know Tom Cruise, if we just want to call him and ask him if he'd support some charity, let's say, mm-hmm. what do you think the odds are that you and I can get his direct number, call Tom Cruise up on his cell phone while he's watching a basketball game and talk to him? I mean, mm-hmm. there's going to be, I'm positive, many levels of people between you, me, and Tom Cruise. And, um, I, of course, I was never Tom Cruise in my career. Mm-hmm. Never never that busy or successful. But I'm just saying, I was a version of that. You know, it was a uh, a difficult thing to, to get me buckled down, nailed down for anything in those mm-hmm. days. Um, but today, um, no. it's It would be my fault if I didn't get back to you. 
Although, you know, I will say this, you know, when you're getting, you know, 20, 30, 40 calls a day and you're mm-hmm. gone for like, you're in Russia, say, for a week and a half, how many messages do you think there are for me when I get home? Oh, you know, thousands. When you get like 20 or 30 of them a day, I mean, and you're yeah. gone for 10 days, I mean, it, it, I could spend all my time getting back. I got thousands, literally thousands of messages on my Facebook page. <laughs> I try to go through those things, but it's almost impossible. There's no way I can go back and get the old ones. I mean, I can't. I can't keep up with the new ones. I, I, I started the Facebook page. Actually, uh-huh. a friend started it for me. He said, "Don, you got to get on Facebook." I said, "Well, I never did that," and they did it for me. Uh-huh. And um, I just started clicking yes to everybody, and all of a sudden, boom! I had five thousand people in like two months, and th- there were no. More, I couldn't add any more people. So people said, well, just tell people to friend you. So I said, okay, well, friend me. So now i got like six or 7,000, not friends, um, uh, followers. Yeah, follow me. Mm-hmm. So now I've got like 12,000 people on Facebook that are friends, quote, followers, and I don't advertise that. It's people that seek me out and, um, you know, want to keep up with what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So I, I, if, if you try to reach me on Facebook, I mean, I, was, I apologize, but I mean, it, it just, imagine... There's 10,000 people, mm-hmm. and they start sending these little messages on my message board. How, how many messages do you think it would be in a week, let's say? <laughs> I can't even count them. They're in thousands, though. And, you know, and, and, and you, 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 believe me, I, I, didn't, I don't target anybody out and say, okay, well, I'm not going to check his messages, or I'm not going to check her messages, or whatever. I, I check them occasionally mm-hmm. once in a while. Mainly, I just post things on it. And sometimes I'll respond to some some comments somebody might make, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it, I, I enjoy it. I like being in touch with my uh, friends in the martial arts, I call them. I mm-hmm. may not have ever met them, but if they're martial artists, we're, we share a common interest. Oh, oh absolutely, Dawn, and I'm going to go on public record here on my show and apologize for all the calls I made to your office. I just wanted to make oh, sure no, that no, I got no, a hold no. of you. I, no, no, this is my uh, business. If you called this number, this is my business office phone. This is the one that's supposed to get all the calls. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it, uh, it stores them, and um, uh, when I come back, I, I um, sometimes, if I'm gone for like two weeks, I mean, I'll have somebody write the messages down. But, but mm-hmm. usually I, I'll get back and I'll, I'll check it myself. Oh, that that that's amazing! And um, we, uh, Don, we can wrap this up any time that you want. Um, um, I, I do have, uh, I do have um, two two questions for you. Um, did you like this interview? Uh, absolutely, yeah, it's been fun. I, I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Oh, I, absolutely. And uh, it, um, would you ever come back eventually to the show to promote? New new stuff, possibly your new movies. Oh yeah. That stuff. yeah, of course, yeah. That would be, um, you know, it's always good to get publicity. There's no doubt about it. It's always a good thing. There's, there's, well, I know they say the only bad publicity is no publicity, but I guess there could be some bad things. Uh, you know, Van Damme when he was, you know, in rehab and things. I mean, that, that if you read, uh, uh, hey, look, it's Don Wilson. He, he's in all the news. And, and somebody said, well, what's, what's going on? He says, oh, he's in drug rehab. <laughs> I don't think that's good news. That's not necessarily good. But most of the times it is good. And this is, of course, just this is great for me to be able to plug everything and talk to all the people. So I appreciate it. Oh, absolutely, because this interview, I'm going to get it everywhere. YouTube, I can find to do videos, audio. This, this hey, I'll put it up on, listen, I'll put it up on my, my page. That's 11,000 people. I'm sure someone want to listen to me ranting and raving. Oh, uh, absolutely, because I, you know, Dawn, I, I told my family, I was so excited about this interview that I um I played your voicemail for my family. Um, and I was like, I can't wait to do this show. So. Oh, great. Well, you know what? I'm glad we got, got to work on it then. So, um, and, and I know you're a very busy man, so um, do you have any, uh, do you have any final, uh, final thoughts before, uh, before no, I let just, you go? Uh, just, I uh, hope everybody, um, you know, has a great year this year and, uh, 
Uh, looks like we're, we're turning the corner on that recession. I think things are going to get better. So uh, I'd like to thank all my fans for all the support over the years. You know, I, I used to have kickboxing fans. Now I got movie fans. So uh, you know, no, no kickboxer can make a living if nobody's watching his fights, and and no actor can make a living if nobody's watching his movies. So I owe it all to my friends slash fans, and and I'd like to thank them all. Oh. I, absolutely, uh, Don. And um, I was going to tell you too, my friend. If you're ever, if you're ever in West Virginia or somewhere in the Virginia area, please, please let me know. Okay, so. I will do it. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot, Justin. I appreciate it. Th- thank you, Don. And uh, take care of my friends, and we'll be talking to you again in the near future. Great, and and make sure I, I get the uh, you know the the. Um, Download or the you know the link so I can let all um, my friends uh, also listen to the interview. Oh, absolutely! I'm actually going to work on it now. To get it Great. posted on YouTube. So. All right, all right. Have a good day. You too, Don. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye.